Good evening and welcome to the 2021 State of the County Address. While we would love to be in person with all of our attendees, we're incredibly grateful for our partners at KGT Channel 17 for making tonight possible. The State of the County is an opportunity for the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors to share their vision for the coming year and acknowledge the work that county employees have been doing recently. Before we begin, please join us in the National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by our supervising public health nurse, Ann Walker, in honor of all the medical professionals in Kern County who have dedicated their lives to keeping us safe this past year. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kern County has a rich history in ag, oil, and aerospace, but more recently we're seeing our economic outlook change and diversify. Now, the president of Kern Economic Development Corporation, Richard Chapman, is going to provide an update on the county's outlook. Good evening. My name is Richard Chapman, president and CEO of the Kern Economic Development Corporation. We're happy to partner with Kern County on the State of the County 2021 event. Kern EDC's mission is to promote and cultivate Kern County's boundless opportunities for business. And we're privileged to have an incredibly vibrant economy. Kern County is ranked number two in the country for ag production, number seven for oil. We're home to the largest wind and solar farms in the country, as well as the world's largest borax mine. And if we look at the top 10 reasons to live and work in Kern County, we have an amazing top 10 list. We are one of the top communities in the country for startup businesses, number one for engineering salaries, the third most diversified economy in the country, and the most livable metro in the US. In early 2020, Kern County was ranked the 13th most resilient economy in the country. This is due in large part to the fact that Kern County, the Bakersfield MSA, has more essential jobs than any metro in the US energy and natural resources, aerospace defense, logistics and manufacturing, healthcare and value-added ag, all play major roles in creating a sustainable regional economy. Indeed, Kern County is the largest economy in the San Joaquin Valley. According to just released 2019 gross domestic product data, our economy is approximately $51.4 billion. That is 10% larger than the number two Fresno County. We are the seventh largest economy in California, as well as the 60th largest in the US. In 2020, the term remote work became more relevant than ever. Kern County is adjacent to a $1 trillion economy, the LA Basin, and a majority of workers in the LA Basin can work remotely. That's why Kern County offers the ideal location for those workers in terms of talent attraction. 
Let's take a look at the project announcements in 2020. In late summer, Amazon opened a 2.6 million square foot facility, hiring thousands of workers in our region. Bear in mind there's only three similar facilities like this in the country. In East Kern, where we talk about innovation rising, Virgin Galactic premiered the interior of Spaceship Two. In addition, $3 billion has been dedicated to China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station. And in Boron, Rio Tinto has discovered lithium. Moving ahead in the pipeline in 2021, Hard Rock Casino and Hotel is a $600 million project that will create 2,000 permanent jobs as well as 1,000 construction jobs, bringing new money and tourists from around the country into Kern County. And in Bakersfield, Bitwise Industries will open soon, elevating our tech ecosystem in the region. Along those lines, Kern EDC is excited to partner with Seedcorp Foundation on the Kern Initiative for Talent and Entrepreneurship. We work in four critical areas to enhance the region's entrepreneurial ecosystem. Spaces, funding, talent, as well as guidance. Kern EDC is also a partner on the B3K initiative, Better Bakersfield Boundless Kern, a public-private coalition designed to create a prosperity plan to ensure the region's future economic success. In just eight minutes, energy from the sun reaches the earth. We take it from there. Eight Minute Solar Energy was founded on the vision to make solar the lowest cost, most reliable form of energy powering the planet. And we're committed to working with partners and communities across Kern County to achieve this vision while creating long lasting economic growth. Energy should be clean, cheap, and dependable, day and night. Eight Minutes projects in Kern are proving that solar, paired with battery storage, can do just that. Building on the region's long history in energy innovation and leadership, the future of energy is being shaped right here. Eight Minutes Solar Energy, a team of innovators, engineers, and scientists. We are dedicated partners and good neighbors, turning sunlight into energy to power the lives of millions of Californians. The 20 Mule Team is a decades-old California icon with as much pioneering spirit today as it had in the late 1800s. Located in eastern Kern County, today's mine operation may look different, but our commitment to safety, quality, and people is still intact. From the moment you pass through the gate, it's safety first. Training, safety protocols, and peer review are essential tools to keep staff safe. We pride ourselves in delivering a quality product. Stringent testing and attention to detail are at the core of our brand. And last but not least are the people making it all happen. Their work is meaningful and satisfying. Their pride is apparent. But don't take our word for it. Listen to theirs. I love working at RTBL. This is one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a tremendous amount of pride to be able to work alongside some of these people. Some of the best in the industry that I've been with. It's a great company to work for. I love to be surrounded by the people that I'm surrounded by. It's like the second family out here. Rio Tinto is not just a mining company, they're a safety company. And so as we talk about what we do as a business, we look at everything first with safety involved. As long as you have the ability to come and work safe and you have a desire to learn, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I love working here. And everybody takes pride in their work. And so being around that is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. The last two and a half years, I've run the plant mechanically and electrically where my grandpa used to work. So I have a lot of pride vested in this place. And I would say that that brand behind me, it really means a lot to us working here.
and now I'd like to introduce our platinum sponsors, Ken Keller, President and CEO of Memorial Hospital, and Bruce Peters, President and CEO of Mercy Hospitals. Good evening, I'm Ken Keller, President of Bakersfield Memorial Hospital. And I'm Bruce Peters, President of the Mercy Hospitals. It is a privilege to be a sponsor of today's virtual event, highlighting the state of our county. We come to you with the understanding that these are unprecedented times. We could never have imagined the state of our county as we know it. The unanswered questions that remain about the future of our businesses, local education and livelihood is at stake managing through this pandemic, and the critical point is the future of our city. Never has there been a bigger healthcare challenge for our communities. Never has there been a more important time for us to address the social and economic disparities to care for the well-being of every person, regardless of their race, age, or social status. At Dignity Health, we are proud to be leading the way in the well-being of our community. We consider it a privilege. Our caregivers have shown the commitment and dedication to face this challenge, and we're so proud of their courage and strength. We tirelessly work every day with your support to honor their integrity and make every effort to lift their spirits and keep them inspired to help us all through this challenge. Because it's moments like this, and it happens every day at our three hospitals, when we can call a code HOPE, when one of our patients is given the care and treatment needed that allows them to leave our hospitals and go back home. It is a special time for our caregivers, a reward for their hard work and support. So as we talk about support, we want to acknowledge the way that you have showed us how much you care for us. From the bottom of my heart, it has made a difference. Earlier this year, at all three of our Dignity Health hospitals, hundreds of you parked outside the hospitals, red lights flashing, and you prayed. Your prayers inspired us. Healthcare workers across our communities were blessed and comforted for those who rallied around them through this collaborative prayer. Thank you for that it made a difference. Today we are now asking you and other leaders within the community to support us in facing an even bigger challenge across the Central Valley, communicating the importance of getting the vaccine to fight the coronavirus. As we enter into the new year, it is critical that we reiterate the safety of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines and the positive impact vaccinations will have on stemming the pandemic and offering the best protection from COVID-19. As a member of the largest not-for-profit healthcare system in the nation, our parent, Common Spirit Health, stands to serve one in every four patients across this amazing country, and is our mission to care for the most vulnerable in our communities. At Mercy and Memorial Hospitals, we are in a position to make a difference, and our commitment to you as a member of the Dignity Health family is that we will. We will carry out our mission through the healing power of humanity at a time when love, patience and human kindness is needed more than ever. The 20 Mule Team is a decades-old California icon with as much pioneering spirit today as it had in the late 1800s. Located in eastern Kern County, today's mine operation may look different, but our commitment to safety, quality, and people is still intact. From the moment you pass through the gate, it's safety first. Training, safety protocols, and peer review are essential tools to keep staff safe. We pride ourselves in delivering a quality product. Stringent testing and attention to detail are at the core of our brand. And last but not least are the people making it all happen. Their work is meaningful and satisfying. Their pride is apparent. But don't take our word for it. Listen to theirs. 
I love working at RTBL. This is one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a tremendous amount of pride to be able to work alongside some of these people. Some of the best in the industry that I've been with. It's a great company. I love to be surrounded by the people that I'm surrounded by. It's like the second family out here. Rio Tinto is not just a mining company, they're a safety company. And so as we talk about what we do as a business, we look at everything first with safety involved. As long as you have the ability to come and work safe and you have a desire to learn, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I love working here. And everybody takes pride in their work. And so being around that is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. The last two and a half years, I've run the plant mechanically and electrically where my grandpa used to work. So I have a lot of pride vested in this place. And I would say that that brand behind me, it really means a lot to us working here. In just eight minutes, energy from the sun reaches the earth. We take it from there. Eight Minute Solar Energy was founded on the vision to make solar the lowest cost, most reliable form of energy powering the planet. And we're committed to working with partners and communities across Kern County to achieve this vision while creating long lasting economic growth. Energy should be clean, cheap, and dependable, day and night. Eight Minutes projects in Kern are proving that solar, paired with battery storage, can do just that. Building on the region's long history in energy innovation and leadership, the future of energy is being shaped right here. Eight Minutes Solar Energy, a team of innovators, engineers, and scientists. We are dedicated partners and good neighbors, turning sunlight into energy to power the lives of millions of Californians. Please welcome our presenting sponsor, Amanda Smith, General Manager of Rio Tinto Borates and Lithium. The Great Mojave Desert is home to the largest open pit mine in the state of California, Rio Tinto Borates and Lithium. With nearly 100 years of operational expertise, we supply 30% of the world's need for refined borates. Hello everyone, I'm Amanda Smith the general manager for Rio Tinto's borates and lithium operations here in California. We are honored to sponsor this year's State of the County. In 2020, our teams continued to maintain safe and stable operations, effective use of technology, and innovative mining and processing. Let me show you. First, we concentrated on our core business, safely producing the borates necessary for modern living, including the glass for your cell phone, an additive for your laundry, insulation in your home, and micronutrients for food grown all over the world, and so much more. We also supported a project we call Borates Digital, an ongoing effort to develop digital operational solutions for our business. Borates Digital has already made a positive impact on the way we work. We are proud to have been an essential business throughout 2020, retaining our employees and achieving our mission. In addition, we're very excited to be moving forward on production of domestically sourced lithium. Lithium discovered in 100-year-old stockpiles is central to California's commitment to power clean energy technologies. A dedicated team put their heads together to develop the process of extracting the lithium from our rock and clay waste stream, so there's no need for further mining. Lithium is essential to powering the latest technologies, including smartphones, rechargeable batteries, and electric vehicles. Capable of producing 10 metric tons of battery-grade lithium per year, the plant is the next step in scaling up this innovative process. Our success will also extend the life of the mine, supporting the East Kern County economy for decades to come. At Rio Tinto Borates and Lithium, it takes a lot of people to mine, process, package and ship all of our products globally. It takes different skills and education to really get the job done. 
We hope to see you on site one day, either as a guest or maybe even a future employee. Until then, stay safe. In just eight minutes, energy from the sun reaches the earth. We take it from there. Eight Minute Solar Energy was founded on the vision to make solar the lowest cost, most reliable form of energy powering the planet. And we're committed to working with partners and communities across Kern County to achieve this vision while creating long lasting economic growth. Energy should be clean, cheap, and dependable, day and night. Eight Minutes projects in Kern are proving that solar, paired with battery storage, can do just that. Building on the region's long history in energy innovation and leadership, the future of energy is being shaped right here. Eight Minutes Solar Energy, a team of innovators, engineers, and scientists. We are dedicated partners and good neighbors, turning sunlight into energy to power the lives of millions of Californians. The 20 Mule Team is a decades-old California icon with as much pioneering spirit today as it had in the late 1800s. Located in eastern Kern County, today's mine operation may look different, but our commitment to safety, quality, and people is still intact. From the moment you pass through the gate, it's safety first. Training, safety protocols, and peer review are essential tools to keep staff safe. We pride ourselves in delivering a quality product. Stringent testing and attention to detail are at the core of our brand. And last but not least are the people making it all happen. Their work is meaningful and satisfying. Their pride is apparent. But don't take our word for it. Listen to theirs. I love working at RTBL. This is one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a tremendous amount of pride to be able to work alongside some of these people. Some of the best in the industry that I've been with. It's a great company to work for. I love to be surrounded by the people that I'm surrounded by. It's like the second family out here. Rio Tinto is not just a mining company, they're a safety company. And so as we talk about what we do as a business, we look at everything first with safety involved. As long as you have the ability to come and work safe and you have a desire to learn, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I love working here. Everybody takes pride in their work. And so being around that is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. The last two and a half years, I've run the plant mechanically and electrically where my grandpa used to work. So I have a lot of pride vested in this place. And I would say that that brand behind me, it really means a lot to us working here.
The 20 Mule Team is a decades old California icon with as much pioneering spirit today as it had in the late 1800s. Located in Eastern Kern County, today's mine operation may look different, but our commitment to safety, quality, and people is still intact. From the moment you pass through the gate, it's safety first. Training, safety protocols, and peer review are essential tools to keep staff safe. We pride ourselves in delivering a quality product. Stringent testing and attention to detail are at the core of our brand. And last, but not least, are the people making it all happen. Their work is meaningful and satisfying. Their pride is apparent. But don't take our word for it. Listen to theirs. I love working at RTBL. This is one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a tremendous amount of pride to be able to work alongside some of these people. Some of the best in the industry that I've been with. It's a great company. I love to be surrounded by the people that I'm surrounded by. It's like the second family out here. Rio Tinto is not just a mining company, they're a safety company. And so as we talk about what we do as a business, we look at everything first with safety involved. As long as you have the ability to come and work safe and you have a desire to learn, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I love working here. And everybody takes pride in their work. And so being around that is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. The last two and a half years, I've run the plant mechanically and electrically where my grandpa used to work. So I have a lot of pride vested in this place. And I would say that that brand behind me, it really means a lot to us working here. In just eight minutes, energy from the sun reaches the earth. We take it from there. Eight Minute Solar Energy was founded on the vision to make solar the lowest cost, most reliable form of energy powering the planet. And we're committed to working with partners and communities across Kern County to achieve this vision while creating long lasting economic growth. Energy should be clean, cheap, and dependable, day and night. Eight Minutes projects in Kern are proving that solar, paired with battery storage, can do just that. Building on the region's long history in energy innovation and leadership, the future of energy is being shaped right here. Eight Minutes Solar Energy, a team of innovators, engineers, and scientists. We are dedicated partners and good neighbors, turning sunlight into energy to power the lives of millions of Californians. Thank you to our sponsors, Rio Tinto and Dignity Health. We appreciate your commitment to our county and its residents, not just tonight, but in all the work you do every day. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our chairman. Supervisor Philip Peters was elected to District 1 this past year and was recently sworn in. He's worked in our oil fields and on our farms. He's run his own business here in Kern County, so he understands what it's like for our local business owners. He's volunteered and his desire to be in local politics is driven by the commitment to bring change. And true to his roots, Chairman Peters is also a songwriter, a passion that he shares with his family and something he's seen success in. He very well could be Mr. Kern County, but tonight I'll address him as Mr. Chairman. Without further ado, Mr. Chairman Philip Peters and General Manager of KGT, Derek Jeffrey, for a discussion about our county and our future. First off, Supervisor, congrats. And I, I admire this, I admire you. So also being a native, born and raised in Kern County, it's not many elected officials get to say <laughs> that they're, they get to represent the county that they were born and raised in. Absolutely. So first, I want to officially welcome you and congratulations on that. And uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Derek, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to be down here with you guys. Very good, very good. So as we all are attempting to do in 2021, uh, local business owners are attempting to do and was forecast, right? Have an educated guess 
or a forecast on what we want to see in 2021 and what it will look like, as 2020 really didn't have any baseline. So my first question to you, Supervisor, is can you give us a look at the landscape of the county as you start this year? Sure. I, you know, uh, the way uh, um, the county has been going lately is it's, it's been a little slow, obviously, due to coronavirus. The pandemic's taken a big impact on us over the last year, and we're really focusing on, on dealing with that making sure that our medical facilities are operational, that they have capacity, that they have the staffing that they need. Uh, rolling out the vaccine is a big part right now. And uh, you know, with that in mind, we're also trying to make sure that we're supporting small businesses, uh, employers, employees. We, we wanna protect people's livelihoods and make sure that they can get back to work, but we also wanna protect people's lives and make sure that uh, you know, we do this surely but safely as we, we reopen and hopefully start closing the chapter on this over the next year. Of all the years for you to take your first time <laughs> in a political office, 2021 <laughs> is going to be quite challenging. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah, and uh, economically speaking, yeah, again, because of the coronavirus, we've been impacted pretty, you know, pretty heavily. Over the past five years, we had a big budget deficit that we were, we had a five-year plan we were working through. But now as this year, or this past year has hit us, it's kind of reset the clock on that, it's pushed us back. So I know some county departments are having a difficult time right now, but there are some projects that are happening right now and a few that are on the horizon that uh, I'm pretty excited about. So it's, uh, it's not all gloom and doom right now. Yeah. We're, we have some, some good stuff coming down the pipe. <laughs> good, well, we're all looking for hope yes, and sir. we're all looking for leadership. So um, that kind of segues into the second question that we have for you. And it's, it's county employees and departments they work in have had to shift a great deal, right, to continue this response of last year. So many of us can relate to this, the, uh, the accelerated learning curve of having to adapt and these things being thrown at us and how we just had to implement them immediately with right. employees. The county has had to do this. Are there successes that have been set up nicely for you this year from that adaptation? From sure. Uh, you know, the county employees, honestly, from what I've seen, have just been absolutely phenomenal in adjusting to the new way we're doing business. They have taken every new challenge that comes their way. They've been, you know, picking up extra shifts if they have to. They've been, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, being away from their family, from having to quarantine. The departments are dealing with the challenge of, you know, having more people out than usual due to COVID or, or quarantining. So it's been, it's been really challenging for these departments, but I think there's some things that we're learning from it. Um, we, you know, we have great staff work for the county, which we already knew, but uh, some of the ways we're doing business have changed a little bit. And, you know, there might be some lessons in that that we can take and, and move forward with uh, even after this pandemic is over. Uh, county expenses do we need to go to every single meeting do we need to travel do we need to do everything in person you know maybe maybe we can do more meetings virtually maybe we can deal more uh, with things that way uh, parents that need child care maybe we can find ways to work with them so they can telecommute and find ways for them to do their job from home there's just a a few different things that we've been kind of looking at or exploring that have been best practices maybe that we could implement in the future you know, the hygiene and uh, personal safety aspect of this. Are there some parts of that that we can carry forward with and reduce, you know, lost time during flu season? Just a couple little things here and there that, that we've had to change over the past year, but we might, uh, might make us a better organization going forward. Well, that's something we can absolutely all relate to. Um, <coughs> What would you like to see the county accomplish this year? I'm sure you have a, a, a myriad, right? A, a list of those things. Absolutely. But, um, what are some of those points you'd like to touch on and things that you would like to see the county accomplish? Well, not, not to harp on it, but of course, you know, getting past the coronavirus, trying to, you know, get, get this pandemic behind us. But I really want to see the county come out of this more streamlined, more efficient than ever. I think we're in a good place to do that. Over the past few years, the, the last board implemented pr uh, programs like Advance Kern, uh, Launch Kern, that uh, has saved, I think, $20 million so far in inefficiencies and new ways of doing business while we're still delivering the same or a better product. And I think implementing ideas like that and streamlining the way we do business is going to be huge going forward. The oil and gas EIR is coming before the board in March, so I'm really eager to see that go through the public process. You know, environmental permitting is 
is something that's really critical to Kern County, and I think we need to get everybody's input on that and then get this thing through and implement a, a or I guess reestablish a, a comprehensive permitting program for the oil industry. Mm -hmm. uh, oil is, is absolutely critical in Kern County, as you and, and most people know. They provide uh, huge amounts of our revenue for providing services for public safety, roads, infrastructure. They provide thousands of high paying jobs that support other uh, segments of our economy. You know, they support local businesses. They go out to restaurants. So they're, they're absolutely critical. And then as we reopen and the state starts easing its guidelines in the, in the months to come, we're going to see an increase in demand, hopefully, you know, as people get back to work, as people start traveling again. And I think that the answer to meeting that energy need in California isn't importing oil from overseas. It's utilizing Kern County that has the resources, the abilities, the experience, and tapping into that right here in our own backyard. And so I think that's going to be a big part of what, what I'd like to see in 2021 is getting that uh, uh, oil and gas EIR process uh, behind us. Yeah, you and I were speaking earlier, and, and we were talking about how we're both Kern County boys, born and raised, right? Absolutely. So my, my father worked in the oil fields for decades, and so we went through those <laughs> cyclicals, up and downs of the oil fields. Never and ends. Hence the name Derek. Right. right? It's, it's <laughs> there you go. Easy to see. <laughs> um, so we discussed your forecast, your, your insight, the, the goals for 2021. And like I said before, the people are really looking for leadership, right? They're looking for hope. They're looking for the light in the dark of yes, these sir. times. So what are you wanting or expecting to see for Kern County over the next few years? Well, I think we have our share of challenges for sure. You know, the, the budget has been something that's been plaguing us for years, you know, ever since the oil crash in 2014 and then this pandemic. So we're constantly having to reevaluate how we're doing that. But there, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know, first off, I want to really focus on some strategic long-term financial planning for the county and figuring out ways we can get resources to our different departments. I know some have been having to make do with less, uh, a lot less in some cases than they'd like to have. Our uh, public safety especially has been hit hard and I want to do what I can to make sure we stay financially sound, but they have the tools they need to do their jobs. And I think the way we're going to do that is not only by championing our existing industries here like oil and ag, but also looking at ways we can bring new industries here and diversify our ec economy. We had all of our eggs in the oil industry basket in 2014, you know, so to speak. And as soon as that market crashed, it was devastating to us here. So any way that we can attract new businesses, any way that we can kind of help spread that, that out, I think is going to be hugely um, important to Kern County. And there are projects on the horizon that I think are going to do that. The Tohon Indian tribe is very close to getting their final approval, I believe, for their Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. We have a lot of solar projects uh, slated for this coming year that are going to be providing more revenue for the county. There are some uh, wind and solar energy uh, storage projects on the books. Uh, this EIR uh, is going to be huge in getting the oil industry back to work. You know, water, always a huge issue here, something that we're working through. but. You know, we're taking that on a case by case basis. It, it's a difficult issue, but that that comes with being being in California and dealing with all this overregulation we're constantly having to deal with here. Mm -hmm. So there there are definitely some good projects on the horizon, and I think I think 2021 is really going to be a launch pad for for our financial success in the in the following year. This year is just going to be about recovering and getting our feet back underneath us. Supervisor, I'm I'm sure that you're very excited about several projects that are coming up in your district or in your jurisdiction. Can you tell me about one of them? Sure. Uh, the, the base out of China Lake right now is a, a huge project that's going on. We, thanks to uh, Congressman McCarthy, uh, have, I believe it's $3.1 billion in uh, you know, federal money coming out for infrastructure and repairs and rebuild at the, uh, at the base. And that, that, plays a, that base plays a critical role in Eastern Kern and as part of our national uh, uh, defense. So it's going to be hugely vital in getting that money here. It's going to bring you know, people here using our services, working, spending money. Uh, so that's going to be a huge benefit to Kern County. Uh, also, we have along the, the lines of diversifying our economy, 
We have a lot of uh, logistics and manufacturing moving into Kern County. They're coming here for the affordability, for you know, more sensible regulations, our access to major transportation corridors, and they're, they're hiring people left and right. They're, they're building a new segment that, or rather expanding a segment that uh, is gonna help, help provide a, another more stable base for us, uh, for our revenue stream here at the county, and is, is just part of the, uh, the overall picture of, of growth that I think we're gonna start seeing here in the next couple of years. Supervisor, we, we kind of touched on it earlier in, in a couple of the questions, but I really like to dig in this a little more. I know it's a, it's a very contentious topic, and, but people of the county and people of Kern County want to speak about it, and it's, it's the sense of uh, over-regulation right. um, on Kern County and our two major economic factors, sectors being oil and ag. Absolutely. Would, would you like to touch on that? Sure. You know, there's, there's a constant uh, sense that we get out of Sacramento. It seems like they've got Kern County and its crosshairs, in particular the oil industry. And we, you know, we saw through an executive order recently, they're trying to take, I can't remember how many millions of cars off the road, they're trying to get rid of cars that run on gas and diesel, they're trying to uh, ban fracking altogether in the state, they're trying to do anything they can to shut down oil here, it seems like. And Kern County produces the most environmentally friendly oil probably out there. I mean, you know, we have so many factors that we have to comply with, so many different um, agencies that make sure that everything we do is environmentally friendly and produced that way. And then we also don't have the shipping, uh, all the emissions and all that from uh, bringing in imported fuels. So it's, it's, you know, any way you look at it, more friendly for the environment to produce it here but they're constantly after us they're constantly trying to shut it down we've seen things like uh, sigma legislation in 2014 which you know parts of it are are good and needed in our critically overdrafted basins but we're we've seen i can't tell you how many trillions of acre feet of water sent out to the delta or uh, into the bay up out of san francisco farmers are not getting all the water that they're supposed to be getting uh, thanks to Congressman McCarthy, we are getting some dollars to uh, repair the Frank Kern Canal, which I think has a 60% uh, drop in its efficiency over the years. And so hopefully that'll get farmers some more water, but there's constant regulations coming from the state that are making it harder to do business. And then sustainable energy is a big part of the governor's plan, you know, wind, solar, uh, and all that, but Kern County is, is gonna be an integral part of that. However, they passed a law, I believe it was in 2012, that prevents uh, property taxes from being assessed on, uh, or for improvements that are, that are solar related. So I know that uh, there's, there have been a lot of solar fields out there that um, basically are taxed like, you know, uh, fallow land, and they, uh, they're not really generating any revenue for the county and there might be some ways we can look at that, but it seems like any segment of industry that Kern County has that, that we can use to uh, be successful and get people to work, there's some kind of legislation coming from Sacramento that either makes it harder or outright impossible to do business. So I'm really interested in working with, with the state to change that. We've got some really great local uh, representation up at the state in Assemblyman Fong and Senator Grove that are that are out championing and uh, pounding the drum for Kern County so I'm excited to, to be a part of that fight and help them out with that and uh, do what we can to, to keep Kern County working. Very good words of hope from your first district supervisor Phil Peters <laughs> thank you for your time thank, thank you. you for being here again congratulations I and, appreciate uh, that best of luck to you moving forward thank you and I would I would like to say just to everybody out there in Kern County that you know there's a lot to be excited about there's a lot to be hopeful for we're letting people know that Kern County is still a place where businesses can succeed. We've got home sales jumping up. We've got median home prices jumping up. We're, we're growing. We're going to do big things. Um, there's a lot to be hopeful for. So I just wanted to end on that really positive note. And uh, on a personal note, I'm really excited to be part of this, this new team as the new supervisor. We've got some absolute rock stars working for us at the county that are 
you know, extremely dedicated to the residents and serving them every day. So I, I think 2021 is going to be a pros prosperous and successful year, and I'm really excited to be a part of that team. Well said. Supervisor, thank you. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman Peters and Mr. Jeffrey. In just eight minutes, energy from the sun reaches the earth. We take it from there. Eight Minute Solar Energy was founded on the vision to make solar the lowest cost, most reliable form of energy powering the planet. And we're committed to working with partners and communities across Kern County to achieve this vision while creating long lasting economic growth. Energy should be clean, cheap, and dependable, day and night. Eight Minutes projects in Kern are proving that solar, paired with battery storage, can do just that. Building on the region's long history in energy innovation and leadership, the future of energy is being shaped right here. Eight Minutes Solar Energy, a team of innovators, engineers, and scientists. We are dedicated partners and good neighbors, turning sunlight into energy to power the lives of millions of Californians. The 20 Mule Team is a decades-old California icon with as much pioneering spirit today as it had in the late 1800s. Located in eastern Kern County, today's mine operation may look different, but our commitment to safety, quality, and people is still intact. From the moment you pass through the gate, it's safety first. Training, safety protocols, and peer review are essential tools to keep staff safe. We pride ourselves in delivering a quality product. Stringent testing and attention to detail are at the core of our brand. And last but not least are the people making it all happen. Their work is meaningful and satisfying. Their pride is apparent. But don't take our word for it. Listen to theirs. I love working at RTBL. This is one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a tremendous amount of pride to be able to work alongside some of these people. Some of the best in the industry that I've been with. It's a great company to work for. I love to be surrounded by the people that I'm surrounded by. It's like the second family out here. Rio Tinto is not just a mining company, they're a safety company. And so as we talk about what we do as a business, we look at everything first with safety involved. As long as you have the ability to come and work safe and you have a desire to learn, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I love working here. And everybody takes pride in their work. And so being around that is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. The last two and a half years, I've run the plant mechanically and electrically where my grandpa used to work. So I have a lot of pride vested in this place. And I would say that that brand behind me, it really means a lot to us working here. While this year's address had to be done remotely, we truly look forward to the day we can all be together again, working toward the future of our county and becoming better together. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you in 2022. And thanks for the tremendous support from our sponsors this evening. Our presenting sponsor, Rio Tinto Borates and Lithium. Our platinum sponsor, Dignity Health Mercy and Memorial Hospitals. Our diamond sponsor, Eight Minute Solar Energy. Our gold sponsors, Anthem Blue Cross and Kern Community College District. Our silver sponsors, Bank of America, California Resources Corporation, Metropolitan Recycling, 
Waste Management, and The Wonderful Company. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We're very excited to announce the release of our 2021 Kern County Market Overview, an award-winning publication that showcases our region's dynamic economic vitality. The 20 Mule Team is a decades-old California icon with as much pioneering spirit today as it had in the late 1800s. Located in eastern Kern County, today's mine operation may look different, but our commitment to safety, quality, and people is still intact. From the moment you pass through the gate, it's safety first. Training, safety protocols, and peer review are essential tools to keep staff safe. We pride ourselves in delivering a quality product. Stringent testing and attention to detail are at the core of our brand. And last, but not least, are the people making it all happen. Their work is meaningful and satisfying. Their pride is apparent. But don't take our word for it. Listen to theirs. I love working at RTBL. This is one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a tremendous amount of pride to be able to work alongside some of these people. Some of the best in the industry that I've been with. It's a great company to work for. I love to be surrounded by the people that I'm surrounded by. It's like the second family out here. Rio Tinto is not just a mining company, they're a safety company. And so as we talk about what we do as a business, we look at everything first with safety involved. As long as you have the ability to come and work safe and you have a desire to learn, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I love working here. And everybody takes pride in their work. And so being around that is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. The last two and a half years, I've run the plant mechanically and electrically where my grandpa used to work. So I have a lot of pride vested in this place. And I would say that that brand behind me, it really means a lot to us working here. In just eight minutes, energy from the sun reaches the earth. We take it from there. Eight Minute Solar Energy was founded on the vision to make solar the lowest cost, most reliable form of energy powering the planet. And we're committed to working with partners and communities across Kern County to achieve this vision while creating long lasting economic growth. Energy should be clean, cheap, and dependable, day and night. Eight Minutes projects in Kern are proving that solar, paired with battery storage, can do just that. Building on the region's long history in energy innovation and leadership, the future of energy is being shaped right here. Eight Minutes Solar Energy, a team of innovators, engineers, and scientists. We are dedicated partners and good neighbors, turning sunlight into energy to power the lives of millions of Californians. 